my first meetup. And this particular meetup is taking place in Hayesville, North Carolina. I love North Carolina. I've never been to this section. And it is being put on by two women in the Butterfly Tribe Women Who Camp Facebook group. Uh, Butterfly Tribe is the brainchild of Jan Privet, who has the YouTube channel Butterfly Tracks. And uh, I highly recommend you check out that channel. She uh, has videos of her travels. She interviews uh, solo women campers and uh, also does a lot of rig tours. So a lot of women uh, uh, that she's camping with uh, are gracious enough to allow you to see their rig. So anyway, this is, like I said, my first meetup. I'm pretty excited. We'll see how it goes, uh, but I've got a long drive ahead of me. It's uh, Google Maps says it's eight hours. I usually add a couple of hours to that because you know I'm going to stop and I'm going to eat lunch and I'm going to get gas and I'm going to go to the restroom and I'm going to do all that stuff. So I will check in periodically. And thanks for hanging out with me. I arrived at Jackrabbit Mountain Campground late in the afternoon and couldn't believe how nice my sight was, right on the clear waters of Lake Chattoog. After setting up camp, I went to a bonfire at our hostess, Debbie Jean's site, and several of us moseyed on across the peninsula to catch the sunset. The next morning, I woke up to a view of the lake and after coffee and breakfast, went hiking with Debbie Jean and Katie. Katie has just started a YouTube channel herself, and I'm gonna leave you a link to her channel in the video description below. So after watching my video, head on over to Katie's channel and show her some love. I've been asked to slow down Fireplace, do you need the paper my desk is out who care for the world now rest with me close to curtains brew some herbal tea After lunch, one of Debbie Jean's friends took some of us on her party barge. It was great to get to see the lake and surrounding mountains from the water's perspective, and also to have an opportunity to get to know my sister travelers. After another hike with Katie and a bonfire at Chris and Donna's site, I carried my worn out, full of experiences self back to camp. Each morning I had breakfast and coffee at the water's edge, and each morning a male mallard would fly in to paddle around. Big fish, squirrels traveling from tree to tree, and bird song really distracted me from journaling, but in a good way. Chris told Elizabeth, Donna, and me about an abandoned amphitheater in the campground, so we went to check it out. Donna brought her guitar, and Elizabeth and I were treated to a private performance.
Later, I finally took a swim in the irresistible waters of the lake. Well, I've got my matcha tea, matcha latte, and I'm gonna take a walk through the campground. One thing they have uh, in abundance here is sassafras. All parts of the sassafras tree are aromatic, but the root is especially fragrant. And if the smell of it reminds you of something, it's probably because it was once the main ingredient in root beer before it was banned in 1960 when it was discovered that saffron, the main constituent in sassafras oil, was carcinogenic. Many people in the South, my late mother-in-law and her 12 siblings included, used to use sassafras twigs as toothbrushes. These small trees make great landscape specimens. In the summer, their large leaves are lush and green. In the fall, they turn a riot of yellow, orange, red, and purple. Even in the winter, their pretty bark makes a statement. Those of us who love gumbo know that there are two ways of thickening it. Okra was brought over to North America by people from Africa, and dried sassafras leaves, also known as filet, was a technique used by the Choctaw tribe. Gumbo is the perfect metaphor for the beauty of diversity in plants and people. Sassafras leaves come in three distinct shapes, and often all three can be found on one plant. There's the mitten shape, like this one, with the thumb being on the left or the right, and then there's a three-lobed shape, like this leaf. If you will look towards the top of this plant, you'll notice that there are just plain oval-shaped leaves. Flowers are produced on female plants, and spicebush swallowtails love the nectar. They also often lay their eggs on the sassafras, and their caterpillars feed on the leaves. As beautiful as these are, these are an aggressive, <laughs> invasive species. And I've seen them all over the mountains here. And it's an oxeye daisy, and they're pretty common in a lot of places. And they're common because they're highly aggressive. And, um, you know, so you're going to see a lot of them. This beautiful little plant with its pretty little white flowers and its pretty little striped leaves is spotted wintergreen or Pipsissawa. Pipsissawa is a Creek word meaning to break into small pieces. The Creek used it to break up kidney stones. It's a little hard to see this plant amongst all the greenery but in the winter, its striped evergreen leaves really stand out against the dead leaves of the forest floor. Pipsissawa is almost extinct in Canada, and it's endangered in Illinois and Maine. It's highly vulnerable in New York, so it's imperative not to disturb it. Pipsissawa is my reminder to appreciate the moment I'm in, for it's all I'm guaranteed.
I enjoyed one last communal bonfire at Donna and Chris's campsite. Then early the next morning, I left for the long trip home. One of the nice things about traveling alone is you get to stop wherever and whenever you want. I'd read about Cherokee Rock Village and I decided to check it out on my way home. It was well worth the detour. Located near Leesburg, Alabama, at the southern end of Lookout Mountain, it overlooks Weiss Lake and is a popular spot for climbers trying to hone their skills on the towering sandstone boulders. The people of the Cherokee and Creek tribes occupied this site from about 8,000 BC until they were forcibly removed from the area in 1838 by the Indian Removal Act. It is believed that Cherokee Rock Village was an important religious and ceremonial spot for both groups. I can understand why. It's a place where I can see how the weather and geological events have shaped this most motherly planet and how she, in turn, shapes us. It's a place to honor and show respect for the mother and her children who came before us. with 
and I cannot wait to see, well gosh, I'd love to see any of the people that were there again further down the road. So I really want to thank Debbie Jean. She's the one that put this together. I want to thank uh, Jan Privet, Privet because she is the one that started Butterfly Tracks and which morphed into Butterfly Tribe Women Who Camp, the, the Women Who Camp Facebook group. It was my first time and it was several other people's first time and I think everybody at this event felt welcome and felt heard. Everybody was heard. Everybody was heard and seen and listened to and that is awesome. So uh, I guess I'm going to sign out for now. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel. Consider subscribing and I don't force anybody. Um, and uh, thanks for hanging out with me. And